this time tomorrow I'm going to be on vacation with Sarah. Raymond. Hey, good. I'm sorry for stopping by so late, but I called earlier and you weren't in. Oh, yeah, well, if that's a long story. What are you doing in Landview? I thought you were in... I'm supposed to be in New York. I know. I'll explain later. Um, may I come in? Please, please, yes, do. So, where's your bodyguard? Uh, Joseph's waiting down the hall. Um, Megan, there's something I have to talk to you about. It can't wait until morning. Hi, honey. Sweetheart, thank God. Come here. <laughs> Maybe I had to come home late more often. And scare me half to death? No, thank you. Well, no, I didn't mean to, uh, to worry or anything. It's just that uh, kind of a weird chain of events. All right, happened. well, I want to know everything. The last thing I heard, you and Megan were going to the Lana Flag House to scout locations for the documentary. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we did. It's just that we got a little more than we bargained for. Anyway, I'll tell you about that later because I have something uh, for you. Surprise. Airline tickets? Yep. <laughs> But our honeymoon isn't until February. Yeah, well, they're not for, for you and me. They're for you and your sister. So you and Megan are going to go on a little uh, vacation down to the islands. <laughs> Don't you have anything to say? I, I thought you'd really love a little fun in the sun. Well, I'd love the truth even more. Why this sudden vacation? What are you hiding from me? From you. Then why the airline tickets, huh? And why are you hustling Megan and me out of town? But something's wrong. No, no, you come on, talk. come on. Nothing's wrong. I just thought it'd be nice if my hard-working little fiance got a little break in her routine. Yeah? Well, why can't you take a break in the routine with me? No, believe me, I'd love to, but I've, I've got too much work at the studio. It's impossible for me to get away. Megan, on the other hand, she has a vacation. So I think it'd be nice if uh, the Gordon sisters took a little trip together. You've already discussed this with Megan? Yeah, yeah, when we were at the Lana Flag House, and she thought it'd be a, a great idea. Just you and Megan. So how about it? It sounds very tempting, and I admit it's been a really long time since Megan and I have taken a vacation together. Well, see, there you go. You two could do your sister-to-sister -sister stuff that you've been missing. Honey, I can't go. Of course you can. I've already gotten the airplane tickets. I've made all the hotel reservations. Listen, our wedding is six weeks away. I have a million details to take care of. Details? What? That's my middle name. Really, you give me a list of everything that has to be done, and I'll do it for you while you're gone. I'll just check it off. You get back, you'll be all tan and rested. You slip right into your wedding gown. All I have to do is stand up and say, I do. You are making it very hard for me to say no. Still, I just... Okay, I... okay. All right, let me, let me be perfectly honest with you. This vacation means a lot more to Va Megan than it does to you. As much as she'd like to, to keep strong and, and you know that she's hurting. She hasn't gotten over Max yet. Yeah. I know it's been hard on her. Not that she would admit that. Well, of course not. So you would be not only doing yourself a favor, You'd also be doing a good deed for your sister. 
I think that'd be pretty hard to say no. Hmm. Now that you put it that way, I guess you're right. I wouldn't be much of a sister if I didn't help Megan get over Max. Huh. Plus, I've never been one, really, to turn away from a little R&R &R in the sun. That's great. Then it's all settled. Mm. Hmm? You're going. <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm sorry for being suspicious. It's OK. You don't owe me any apology. But you wouldn't happen to be planning on stepping out with your uh, secretary, would you? Uh, me? Huh? Of course not. I'd be too busy with uh, Joni, little assistant director. Oh. But I'm just teasing you. What about you, by what? the way? Sitting out on the beach in your little bikini, yeah. having thousands of guys hitting on you. Yeah, you have nothing to worry about. Just because the beach is going to be filled with tall, handsome men in little tiny bathing suits. Sweetheart, I'm not even going to notice. Gee, that, yeah, that makes me feel a lot better. Maybe this will make you feel a lot better. Thank you for thinking of Megan and me. <laughs> now, let's go see what time that plane well, no, Sarah, lands. wait. Just wait. Uh... What's this? Nothing. Just give it to me, please. This is a picture of me at the skating rink, which means it must have been taken by that man that was following us. What are you doing with this picture? Raymond, is there something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong, Megan. I didn't mean to worry you. Fact is, the reason I stopped by so late was to tell you some good news for a change. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. I've had enough trouble for one night. Trouble? Oh, it's nothing. Come, sit down. So, tell me your great news. No, 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 that can wait. What do you mean, trouble? What, what happened tonight? Oh, the same thing that always happens when I visit this one house that's haunted by a ghost. A ghost? Actually, she's left. We were visited by another presence tonight, and that's why I was so late. But... I'm not going to tell you about that. That's too boring. It wouldn't mean anything to you anyway. Oh, you're wrong. If it has anything to do with you, it means a lot to me. I've missed you. Have I said that? No. But it's nice to hear. Now, what happened at this haunted house? Actually, it's not haunted anymore. Bo and I went to this house to go and check it out as a possible location for this documentary that we're filming. And when we got there, well, the phone wire was cut, and then shortly after, this strange man broke in, and he had a knife with him. A knife? My God, Megan, are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, and, and Bo's fine as well. He wrestled with this guy, but he got away. Well, what was he after? We're not really sure, except that Bo recognized him as the same man that's been following him and Sarah for a couple of days. The thing that's most bizarre is that while he was wrestling with Bo, a picture of Sarah fell out of his pocket. Well, that's peculiar, isn't it? I mean, do you think he was some kind of a pervert or something? You know, like a... Like a flasher or a peeping Tom or something? Well, I don't think so. I mean, he seemed very ordinary, except for this one ring that he had on his finger. A ring? Yes. While Bo was wrestling with him, he saw this sort of big black ring. He thought it was made out of onyx or something. Onyx? Yeah. Why? What's wrong? What? Oh, nothing, nothing. I, uh... I just have this, uh, passion for jewelry. I, I, I wonder, could you... Describe that onyx ring in a little more detail. You satisfied? I don't care, Ambrose. I'm telling you, I heard something moving down here. Oh, darling, you're just panicky for no reason. No reason? After what happened at the warehouse, every law enforcement agency in the country will be searching for us. Well, they can search till the little heart's content. Nobody's going to think of looking for us on the ship. Well, if it's all the same to you, I won't be happy until we're far away from Landview. Well, never fear, darling. With our new passports and all the permits that we need, we'll be on our way to South America in no time. Rio, they say it's wonderful this time of year. And it's, it's a perfect place for our work. All those poor little children that need homes. Not to mention the carnival and the beach at Ipanema. <laughs> the beach? Ambrose, you're not forgetting your work. I mean, all work and no play makes Ambrose a very unhappy boy. And with a half million that I got from Vicky Buchanan and Max Holden, and the other cash we have stashed away, we're going to be able to live the rest of our lives like kings. But what if we run out of money? We may have to revive our calling. Well, I've been thinking about our calling, darling. 
To be blunt, Serena, I think we've earned fun, and fun we're gonna have. Cover my dead body. Tina! Look, you can forget about South America, because the only place you're going is to the police station. I know you, Tina. You're not a violent person. No, I'm not, but in your case, I'll make an exception. After all we've done for you, you turn on us like Shut this. Shut up, woman! Tina, come on, I'm sure we can work something out. Don't even think about it. Look, I know that you are a woman who appreciates financial opportunity, okay? So I'll tell you what. We'll split our cash reserves 50-50. Ambrose! Serena, let me handle this! Would you stop fighting? The answer is no. All right. All right. We'll give you the whole lot. 500,000 cash. Are you crazy, Serena, Ambrose? would you please keep quiet? Now, Tina, all I'm asking... All I'm asking is that you let us go quietly, and I do mean quietly, and then you'll have all the cash, and we'll just slip away, and no one will be the wiser. Now, that's fair, isn't it? No way. But after you bought and sold all those innocent children, what about all their mothers you tricked into giving up their babies? And, and what about those nice couples that spent their life savings trying to adopt? How dare you sit in judgment, you of all people? Oh, look here, lady. Now, I may have done some bad things in my time, but it is nothing in comparison to what you've done. And you can stop with that holier-than-thou act, because I know exactly what it is. Now, ladies, ladies, come on. All we have here is a misunderstanding. Now, we can settle this quietly. Oh, I understand her. She helped Gabrielle switch those babies, and now she thinks she's better than us? All you care about is money. You're going to try to tell me that the Lord told you to kidnap Al and that the Lord told you to blow up seven innocent people? Or what about shooting Max, huh? Now, the police, when I bring you in, they are going to be so happy that they are going to pardon me for what I did wrong, and I am going to be home with my family. And nothing can stop me from doing that. This is all your fault, Ambrose. This I told you enough. not to hire her, but no, your tongue dropped right to the floor. The moment you saw her, you had to have her around. How was I supposed to know she was going to stab us in the back? Well, one look would have told you if your eyes were bulging out of your head every time she walked by. Would you just stop it now? Just get moved. We're going to go to the police station uh, now. All right, all right, darling. Just, just give me a moment, please. Now, Serena, you know, Tina may be right. Maybe our avarice and self-interest just corrupted our noble mission. Maybe if we take our punishment, we'll be better people for it. Tina, you have saved our souls. Lead us on. You lead on, now move. Go on. Oh! Ow! Oh! Ow! 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 Dan! Hi. I just thought you might like some company. Come in. Look, Brenda, I know you're upset about the argument we had about Michael. But after everything that's happened this evening, I... Oh, God, nobody even called you. About what? It's Max. He was shot. What? Who? Who? Was Why? After... Al was kidnapped by Wyman and his oh, wife. Oh, my God. What do you mean? Of those people that run Lord Love the Children Foundation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Max and a whole bunch of other people tried to go down and rescue Al. Uh, Vicky, Cord, Clint, Tina, Roger, Gabrielle. Is anybody else hurt besides Max? Uh, no, everyone else is fine. Lyman's got away, and uh, Max, he's still kind of touch and go. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're, we're doing everything we can to uh, help him out. Yeah, I, I know you are. Does Megan know yet? I don't know. I didn't even see her at the hospital. Gabrielle, she's a she's a total basket case of oh, Al's. Yeah, I bet she is. And poor Al. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't wish this on anyone, even even Gabrielle. Me neither. God, it's like uh, just when you think that your life is in order. And everything's fine, something like this happens, and it really makes you wonder if we have any control over our lives at all. Well, you know, Brenda, there are some things that we can't control. Like our friendships. 
Did you speak to Michael? Dan, this is hardly the time to talk about that. It really doesn't seem very important at this minute. But if Michael deliberately left the trust fund papers on the table, that seems pretty important to me. I'd just like to know. All right, all right. If you want to know if I went over and I talked to Michael, yes, I did. If you want to know if I'm thinking any more clearly about it, I don't, I, I, I've got to, you know, sort through some Brenda, things. Brenda, you... Forget it. It's a little bit too late for me to be knocking on your door anyway. I'm getting tired and deep. Look, when you're ready to talk about it, we'll talk. Hello? Michael, what are you doing here? I couldn't let things stay the way we left them. I was just leaving. Uh, no, no, uh, Dan. Uh, actually, it's good that you're here, because uh, what I have to say will, uh, will affect you as well. Uh, what will? Brenda, as much as it would mean to me to be Stephen's godfather, and as grateful as I am for the offer, I'm afraid I have to decline. Um, Michael, do we really need to talk about this right now? Well, I think since Dan is here, it's a perfect time. Because, uh, I think you should ask him to be Stephen's godfather. Oh, God, what am I going to learn? I can never keep anything from you. Listen, I was going to tell you all about this just before I put you on the airplane tomorrow afternoon. Oh, terrific. When it's too late for me to do anything about it. Well, I was afraid if I told you about it, then you'd want to cancel this whole vacation. Well, that is very possible. Okay, so I'm waiting to hear the rest of the story. Well, it's, it's, there's really not that much to tell. Megan and I went to the flag house to scout the location, and this guy was there. The same guy that's been following us? Yeah. So I tried to stop him just to figure out who the hell he was and what he was doing, but he got away again. And he dropped this picture of you at the rink. But he destroyed the film at the rink. Well, maybe he had already shot another role. So, what else? Nothing. Sweetheart, I can tell when you're not telling me no, everything. I mean, I feel it. Honestly, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know why he was carrying a picture of you. But it has you concerned enough to ship me out of town. I just think it would be real good idea if you and Megan went on this little trip right now. And by the time you get back, I'll probably know more about this guy. Honey, li this is in your best interest. Oh, really? I remember what it was like after Austin. Sweetheart, I don't want you to have to go through all those nightmares again. Let me tell you something. I can handle the nightmares, all right? What I can't handle is you. Well, that's all I can really tell you. Bo couldn't really remember much more. A black onyx ring with two sort of large clusters of diamonds. And the man who was wearing it, uh, what did he look like? A little over six feet tall, dark, curly hair. He was very well dressed, cl clean shaven. But I thought you were interested in exotic jewelry, not in the man who wears it. Oh, just uh, idle curiosity. I, I picked up the habit of studying rings when I was a boy. and. And all sorts of dignitaries used to mm -hmm. come and visit my father. You know, it's it's uh, it's really quite late, and I need to make some phone calls before I turn in. So, if you'll excuse no, me. No, now I... wait a minute. You came all the way from New York to tell me something, something very important. <gasps> God, I almost forgot all this talk about what happened to you tonight in the Onyx Ring. Um, Megan, I didn't go to New York for those eye tests. Instead, the specialist there told me about a colleague of his in Philadelphia. So I saw him tonight. Now he tells me. So what did he say? Well, it's a little early to get too excited, but uh, he thinks there's reason for optimism. That you'll get your sight back completely? Well, maybe. Maybe the doctor in Philadelphia says the chances are good. Well, that's wonderful. Aren't you happy? <laughs> yes, I am. But uh, I want to keep it in perspective. It, it, it still may take a while, and uh, even then there's the chance Look, that it may not... Look, there's hope. Yes, you're right. There's hope. Which makes me wonder if the same holds true for us. I'm sorry I don't follow you. I think you do. Megan, if I can work out all my problems back in Mendora and, uh, and my vision corrects itself in time, do you think we could stop playing the prince and the showgirl and become just a man and a woman? Is this the same man who told me we had no future together? As long as he was wearing the crown of Mendora and I was a, a commoner. commoner. I, I know. Please don't remind me. So what's happened to change all that? Megan, back home in my country, the same situation still holds true. Ah, 
So nothing has changed. Everything is the same. Back home, you're going to prepare to become king, but while you're here, you'd just like to have some fun with me? Is that it? Well, Your Highness, things haven't changed for me either. I may be a commoner, but I'm not common, and if you intend on having fun with me, well... Megan, you know. stop. Please. I told you before that I, I could never treat you that way, now more than ever. Why? Because I've come to care about you even more than before. Because being away from you and feeling the responsibilities of the crown as the coronation draws near, I... I don't know, to be honest, Megan, I, I don't know what the future holds for me in Mindora. Well, is there something wrong? I mean, wrong back at home? Are you in trouble? No, nothing that any other prince doesn't feel when he's about to become king. Oh, I see, and so I'm here to help you forget your troubles. No. I want more than that, Megan. I don't think I'm asking too much. Who knows? Things are changing so rapidly in Europe, and what was impossible yesterday is impossible today. That's, that's why I want to take you up on your offer. What offer? Well, you said you wanted to spend some time with me in Mindora, get to know the country and its people. Well, one person in particular. Does that offer still hold? For a man who's about to become king, you're awfully shy. Does that bother you? No. I find it refreshing. I'm growing up in a palace. You learn to guard your feelings at an early age. But knowing you, I've learned to let down some of those defenses just a little bit. Megan, what I'm trying to say is... If that is the maid, I'm going to murder her. Excuse me. Yes. Megan, I've been trying to reach you all night. Andy, this is really not No, I'm sorry. Feel... It's just it's something horrible happened, and I thought you might want to know. Max has been shot. It doesn't look like he's going to make it. Sweetheart. Listen, I appreciate your trying to protect me, but it makes me feel like a little girl, not your fiancé. Well, I don't treat you like a little kid. Yes, you do. When you keep things from me, even if they are frightening, it makes me, makes me feel like you think I'm some terrified little child, not the woman you say you want to marry. Good Lord. Sarah, you've got to know how I feel about you. I know that you're a woman. You're all woman. You're the only woman in my whole life. Now and forever. Would you please do the courtesy of treating me like that? All right, I know you don't mean it to be patronizing, but that's the way it comes off. And if I learned one thing from the whole mess with Austin, it's that you and I have to face things together. Because if we don't, if we try to keep things from each other, for whatever reason, it only makes for more trouble. Well, I can't argue with that. So, Sarah Gordon... I solemnly promise never to hide anything from you again. No matter how much it might hurt? No matter how much it might hurt. Care to put that in writing? I'll go you one better. Mm -hmm. I have always loved the way you seal a bargain. Oh. Well, Paradise, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm. Nothing so far? Ah, oh, damn. The wine is can't have just disappeared into thin air. They gotta be hiding out someplace. Well, don't lose hope. We keep searching through this background material. We're bound to turn up something in her past that'll lead us right to them. If you say so. You know, there is one question that uh, you're not going to find the answer to on that computer screen. Oh? When Ambrose and Serena are caught, is life going to return to normal for you and Tina? I don't know exactly what a normal life is for me and Tina. Well, I don't mean to pry, but uh, I know what you've been going through these past few months, and I can't help but be concerned. And I appreciate that. I wish this computer were some kind of a crystal ball. Maybe you could give me some answers. <laughs> Do you know that Tina thinks that once this thing is all resolved, once the Wyman's are put behind bars, that she thinks everything's going to be rosy again between us? Well, you've got to give her credit for one thing. She went to the limit to try and expose him. 
Yeah. Yeah, she did, Clint, but she had her own reasons for doing it. Well, wait a minute. She's anxious to get back to her husband and her son. That's not exactly a crime. Uh, I'm not saying that it is. It's... Time and time again, she has come to me and told me that she has changed, that she's a different person. But... But you don't buy it. I want to. I mean, I, I really do, Clint. I mean, I guess I love her. I guess part of me is always going to love Tina. Still. Still what? Sometimes love just isn't enough? How well I know that, son. How well I know that. Let go, Tina, before Let you go, kill Let go, Serena, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, Tina, he's so foolish. What's he gonna do to me? Well, you haven't left us too many options now, have you, darling? I can think of one. You've interfered with us once too often, Tina. And now you're gonna get your just reward. Serena, wait. No, she's had this coming for a long time, and I mean to give it to her. Uh, so sweetness, just think a moment. Just think. We're gonna have to be living in this cabin for a long time. Who cares, as long as she's not living, period. But you don't want to live in this cabin soiled with her blood? Yeah, listen to him. Shut up. Now, look, I know we have to get rid of her, but this isn't the way. Well, you have a better idea? Yes, I have a couple of ideas. Uh, I, ha I have an idea of my own. Why don't I just leave and, um, I won't tell anyone and you don't even have to give me any money. Oh, nice try, Tina. But I think my idea is a lot more practical. Our Serena, we'll just keep her on board. We'll use her as our personal galley slave. And then once we get into our destination... No way, Ambrose. See, you're doing it again. You're letting her trick you with, with those big blue eyes of hers. No, no, no stalling. Either you get rid of her or I will. All right, my dove. You know I can't refuse you anything. Hold it, Tina! <laughs> just hold it right there. Better say your prayers. Your time has come. You know, I guess there is an upside to Ambrose and Serena still being at large. I mean, it forces me to focus on this and not worrying about making a decision about Tina. They're not going to be on the run forever, Court. Sooner or later, you... Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Would be nice, though, to look into the future. See if Tina and I have got what it takes to start all over again, try to work things out. Yeah, hello. Court Roberts, Banner. Hi, Yolanda. She still isn't back yet? Uh, no, no, I haven't seen her since I left the hospital. What's Tina done now? She hasn't come back to the halfway house yet. No, I I'm still here, Yolanda, yeah. She's very concerned about Gabrielle. I'm sure she's just sticking around to make sure everything's okay. No, no problem. Fine, Yolanda, goodbye. No problem. Court, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, come on, Clintina's involved. Of course we're thinking the same thing. You know, she told me that she was determined to get Ambrose and Serena, put them behind bars. But I told her explicitly not to get involved again. I know exactly where she is. She's out there looking for them, and we don't have any idea where they are. Well, now, maybe we do. This is from an article we did on the Wyman's when they first came to Landview. Uh-huh. Now, that's a long shot, but it's the only one we got. Now, Tina's where I think she is. We don't have a second to spare. The doctor said that they got the bullet out. Oh, thank God. But uh, he's lost so much blood. And there are other complications. It, it looks like it... They say it will take a miracle to cure him. I didn't know if you wanted to know, Megan. No, thank you. I'm, I appreciate your coming over. I just wish there was something I could do to help him. Well, the way Dan Wallach is talking, there's nothing anybody can do. It's not even the doctors. Nobody can save him. It's, we just have to wait and hope. So how is Gabrielle taking all of this? Pretty hard. I can't blame her for feeling guilty. She's the one who was supposed to be shot. The kidnappers tried to kill her? Yeah. But um, Max jumped in front of her to protect her. Of course. Max has a lot of courage, Megan. I remember how he risked his life to help rescue you in Arizona. I'm, I'm sure that same courage will get him through now. 
Yeah, I really should go to the hospital. I think he needs me. I'm sorry, Raymond, to rush out on you no, like no, this. No, no, I, but... I understand. Listen, uh, would you let Joseph drive you and Andy over to the hospital in my car? I, I could come with no, you. No, no, really. I think I should do this alone. Megan. Of course, of course. My thoughts are with you, Megan, and with Max. Take care, Andy. Yeah. Look, I'm going to get my coat and then I'll go to the hospital with you, okay? okay? I don't know what to say, Michael. Well, I'm certain that you feel that Dan is a more appropriate choice to be Stephen's godfather. I hope that this Do you have any objections about it, Dan? Well, you caught me a little off guard there, Michael. Uh, just as surprised as Brenda. Well, I... Uh... I'm sure that we all want what's best for Stephen, right? Sure. So how do you feel about taking on the responsibility of being a godfather? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I really don't think the offer should be coming from you, Michael. Um. But of course, if that's what Brenda wants, I certainly accept. In fact, I'd be honored. Excellent. Brenda? Oh, well, you know, you two have already decided who's going to be Stephen's... Good. Then it's settled. Congratulations, Dan. I'm sure that uh, Stephen is a very lucky little man to have you as his godfather. Yes, well, I am the lucky one. So, does uh, this mean you'll be staying out of his life? <laughs> no, you see, I would like nothing more than to be a part of Stephen's life. But that is up to Brenda. Brenda, I know that you have promised never to keep Stephen away from me, but I'm not going to hold you to that promise. I don't want to cause any more trouble. And... I can give you my word that I'll do my best to see that our differences don't affect Stephen. But, as I say, it is your decision. I'm not going back on my word, Michael. Good. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Well, I think I'll be going. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. What the hell was that all about? Dan, it's really late, and Brenda, what did Michael say to you? Why is he so damn generous now? I don't want to talk about it. Fine. Look, I love your son. I'm proud to be his godfather. I, I, I'll make you happy. I'll make him happy, I promise. I know you will. Brenda, I don't know what's going on between you and Michael. But to be honest with you, I still have doubts about him. You want me to throw another log on the fire? No, I like the way you warm me up better. Oh, you like that? Mm-hmm. Beats a flannel nighty and woolly socks any old night. <laughs> I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what you are? Insatiable. Well, yeah, that too, but you're also a big phony. Beg your pardon? Mm-hmm. You come home late tonight telling me how exhausted you are from your adventure with Megan and look how frisky you got. What? No, I was not being phony. I was beat when I came through the door there. And then I turned, took one little look at my sexy little fiance mm -hmm. and I was in like instant energy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe I ought to bottle that special strange power that I have, huh? If you bottle that and we sell it, we're gonna be rich. You are rich. I'm the richest man in town, as long as I got you. Ooh, I love it when you talk that way. Keep it up. Mm. Well, don't you want me to talk? <laughs> one track mind. <laughs> I do have another question. What? It's the same one. Are you going to go on this vacation with Megan tomorrow or not? Come on. Typical, typical. Make love to me and then just try to get rid of me. Love him and leave him. That's me. Hey, if it's that important to you, I'll go, all right? But you have to make me a promise. Name it. Promise me that you'll call me twice every day and just tell me what you're doing. <laughs> Done. And there's more. When you call me twice every day to tell me what you're doing, you also have to tell me that you love me. I'd rather show you. Do you know what time it is? Yeah. What if it's that man? No, come on. He's not that stupid. You stay put right here, and I'll check it out. Wait a minute. We share everything, remember? Uh, what are you doing? 
Hi, Bo. I'm sorry. I know it's late. I just had to talk to Sarah. What's wrong? Max has been shot. I'm sorry. I can't go on this vacation. Not when his life is hanging by a thread. <laughs> well, that should be tight enough. Not for me. <laughs> I, I saw a bag of cement down in the cargo bin. We can mix it with a little bit of water and let it harden around Tina's ankles, and it, it should be easy as making pie. No, Serena. You want to get rid of her, don't you? I mean, this way she'll sink to the bottom of Landview Harbor. No, no, you wouldn't do that. You're not that heartless. You wouldn't let her do that to me, would you? Well, of course I wouldn't. Ambrose. Cement is too messy. And it takes too long to harden. No, I think this old anchor will do the job just fine. No! <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right, darling. It's much easier and much neater. Yes, and then we can just throw Tina over the side and see if she can swim. You're making a terrible mistake here. Oh, you're the one that made the mistake when you betrayed us. And a fatal mistake, as it turns out. Look, if you don't do anything else, you'll just be wanted for attempted murder. If you kill me, the police are never going to stop till they find you. Yes, but they have to find a body first, don't they? And with you keeping the little fishes company, I don't think that's likely to happen. <laughs> but look, I, I know you're both really reasonable people. And, and just think about it. If you hold me for ransom, then my family will pay you ten times the amount of money you have just to get me back. They love me that much. Well, it's a tempting offer. But Serena and I prefer a bird in the hand, don't we, Serena? Yes. Especially this little bird. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> now, don't beg. You should meet your maker with a modicum of dignity. I'm not ready to meet my maker, not yet. Well, we all have to meet our makers, and we can't choose the time. The maker chooses the time. Now, you just tie this to her feet, and I'll get the engine started. And then when we get out of the harbor, we'll give Tina her last rites. Tell my brother this is more important than a soft-boiled egg. I want to talk to him now. Well, so nice of you to accept the call, Roland. Now, would you mind telling me why you sent some of your men here to Landview? I'm talking about Sarah and Megan Gordon. They're being followed, and I know somehow you've got a hand in it. Oh, is that right? You're as mystified as I am. Well, now, now why, do I, why do I find that hard to believe, Roland? No, no, please, please. Please, don't even bother trying to deny it. Don't insult my intelligence. I don't know what you're up to, but rest assured, I'm working on it. Now, would I threaten my own loving brother? It's just that I've learned not to trust you, Roland. Oh, and another thing. I'm coming back to Mendora tomorrow. Once I'm home, I'm gonna find out just what the hell you're up to. All I know is what Andy's already told me. Well, at least Max is still alive. Well, we have to be grateful for that. Yeah, but for how long? The doctors don't even know if he's going to last through the night. God, when I think of him in that hospital, I just... Megan, I am so sorry. I know that despite everything you and Max have been through, you still care about him. You know, I really want to be there for him, even if he doesn't need me, even if I can't do anything. No, but by all means, Megan, you go. Right, and don't worry about our vacation. We'll go when Max is better. That's assuming he's going to get better. No, hey, Megan, you don't think about the negative here. Max is a tough guy. If, if He's going to fight like hell to pull through this. Bo's right. I know, that's what I keep telling myself, that he's strong, but... I don't know, when I, I think of him... All right, don't think about it then, all right? Andy's in the car, right? Let me go grab some clothes and I'll go with you. Yeah, no, go no, both no, go. no, no, thanks, both of you. I, I really appreciate it, but I think I should handle this on my own. I, I just hope that Gabrielle doesn't think that I'm getting in the way. Well, Megan, she's going to understand why you're there. No, I'm sure she will. And if Max needs... A specialist, if he needs any kind of medical care, you call me right away because Asa has contacts all over the world. He'll fly in the best surgeons at a moment's notice. All right, thank you. I'll remember okay, that. Okay, and remember this, too. I love you. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for understanding. Well, what are sisters for? Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, Bo and I will say a prayer for Max. All right, do me a favor and say two. You could use all the help you can get. Oh, God, Bo. Oh, I know, I know, sweetheart. Every second in this life is just so precious. Promise me that we'll never waste a moment. I promise. 
Well, make sure it's nice and tight. We don't want poor Tina to come back and haunt us now, do we? The only thing that she'll be haunting is the bottom of Landview Harbor. Please, just give me one more chance. You had your chance, dear heart, and you blew it. Going somewhere? Oh, Clark! <coughs> Ow! Clark, watch out! You never learned, did you, lady? Huh? Yes, I wish I killed all of you! That's over, Mrs. Watney. Your punishment will come in the next life. Now, that's fine with me, as long as you get your punishment in this one. That goes for you, too, Ambrose. We called the cops before we came over here. Ah, that must be them now. Court, I knew you'd come. As usual, Tina, you didn't make it real easy for us. Court, I can't believe that everything happened just the way I wanted it to. Just, just take it easy. Sit still. No, I'm just too happy to do that, Court. I mean, I caught the Wymans, me, Tina Roberts. I did. I mean, I know I, I got help from both of you, and I couldn't have done it without you, but still, don't you see the point? Court, I am going to be a national hero. My name is going to be front page news all across the country, and the judge is going to be forced to release me. Oh, honey, everything is going to be fine now. It is just... Sunday, Corky persuades his mom to resume her singing career on Life Goes On. Then, Winnie makes the good and the bad to right Rob's wrongs on Free Spirit. After, Clint Eastwood takes on a band of misfit Marines and his ex-wife. 